The nuclear reactor complex called Daiichi is located right here uh, in the Japanese prefecture of Fukushima. It's about 60 miles from the city of Sendai, which is probably where the pictures of some of the most brutal devastation you have seen from Friday's earthquake and tsunami uh, have come from. The plant is about 170 miles from Tokyo. Because of the radiation that has been released by the ongoing nuclear disaster at Daiichi, almost everyone who works at that plant has been evacuated. They are down to a skeleton crew of 50 very brave people who are taking great personal risks and who, frankly, the world is really counting on right now. An area of 20 kilometers, about 12 miles around Daiichi, has been evacuated. People have been ordered to leave. Anybody between 20 and 30 kilometers, which is 12 to 19 miles of the plant, uh, is being advised to make their homes as airtight as possible and to stay indoors. Authorities as far away as the great population center that is Tokyo have reported radiation levels that they describe as being as high as 20 times above normal for the city. That, of course, sounds terrible, and it certainly is not good, but it does not necessarily mean that that is a level that's going to get anybody sick. Uh, with radiation, it's the amount of radiation you're exposed to, and it's how thoroughly you are exposed to it, and it's how long you are exposed to it. I mean, you wouldn't want to go around being constantly chest x-rayed every day of your life, but the fear of radiation exposure from one chest x-ray is not going to stop you from getting one if your doctor says you need it. It is worth understanding what is worth worrying about and what is not worth worrying about about. And for people in Japan, it is worth doing what they can to prevent unnecessary significant exposure. For example, out of a desire to limit people's exposure to radiation in Japan, there were warnings today that accompanied the latest forecasts there for rain or snow in parts of that country. On Japanese television, people who live near the Fukushima reactors were warned to keep their bodies covered up to not let rain or snow touch their skin. There are really three things to consider about the way that radiation is moving around Japan. Uh, one is, of course, just how much of it there is. There is just concern for the sheer amount of radiation that's going to end up in the atmosphere. That's why everybody is still focused on what is still happening at Daiichi. The second concern is which way the wind is going to blow the radiation. Literally, how is the weather going to deliver the radiation around Japan or off of its coast? The third concern now is not just about the shutdown nuclear reactors at Daiichi, but also having those spent fuel rods emitting radiation uh, that in some cases may be spread by fire. Is that radiation source from these spent fuel rods uh, a quantitatively or qualitatively new concern today? Is that potentially a worse radiation source in terms of human exposure than what we have already been worried about for the past few days. Joining us now is Arnold Gunderson. He's a former executive from the nuclear energy industry turned safety watchdog. He worked on cleanup after the Three Mile Island disaster in the 1980s and on the class action lawsuit resulting from that disaster in the 1990s. Mr. Gunderson, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Appreciate your time. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, are these latest leaks um, associated with this number four reactor potentially more dangerous than the leaks from the other three uh, shutdown reactors? Are, are the radioactive particles released from a damaged spent fuel rod uh, worse than what's released from damaged fuel rods in a reactor that's just been shut down? The, the damage from the fuel rods it has long-lived isotopes. You know, that fuel's been sitting around for a long time, and the short-lived isotopes, like iodine, are no longer there. So... Um, what is there is uh, cesium and strontium and plutonium and, and other long-lived isotopes. What's happening in close to that reactor is uh, probably really powerful gamma rays. That's like an X-ray. Um, but when the fuel rods burn or when they become volatile, like Dr. Von Hippel said, uh, when that happens, now particles are released. And so the particles are affecting the people off-site in the rain and, and, uh, and, and um, falling on their, on their clothing and things like that. In close, my guess is that the, uh, the biggest problem is direct gamma rays, direct x-rays coming out of the fuel pool. Those would be the things that would be of most concern to the people who are on site at the nuclear facility, gamma radiation. That's correct. Okay. In ter let me just ask you to restate what you just said about um, radioactive particles. In terms of how radiation uh, travels, uh, where the weather takes it, can you, what can you explain about, about the concerns here? Is it about breathing it in? Is it about uh, the cloud traveling to other places and being brought down by the rain, for example? How does that work? 
Um, yeah, you know, if you're downstream from a smoker directly, you're going to be right in and smell it a, a lot. But if you're 10 feet to either side, you may just smell it a little. And I think that's what's happening now. We're seeing wide variations in, in instrument readings. Um, I don't think it's because the amount of radiation is, is, is pulsing. I think the same amount of radiation is coming out, but more likely the wind is pushing the plume to the left or pushing the plume to the right. It's very difficult to, um, to determine now because remember, these things have exploded. Whatever radiation detectors were in these reactors are, uh, are obliterated. So now, uh, experts are stuck chasing this radiation around the country. And, you know, the, the aircraft carrier um, uh, Reagan incidentally flew through, uh, dro drove through a plume out 100 miles at sea. They didn't know that was there. And the, so the problem becomes where did that plume go and where is it going next? It looks like one bumped into Tokyo for a few hours, but now has moved on. Um, and the question is, where should they put the radiation detectors to give them the best idea about, um, uh, about the magnitude of this problem? If we could get better at tracking it, um, and we, that may happen over time, that may happen as more resources are devoted to that. Energy Secretary Stephen Chu talked a little bit about that today uh, in Congress. If we could get better at figuring out where these plumes were and where they were going, what could we do about it? Is, or is it just a matter of, of offering us warning and telling people to uh, get out of the way if they need to? Well, it would definitely affect um, you know, radiation evacuation planning. Um, if there's one good thing that's happened in this event, most of the wind has been offshore. Um, so a combination of knowing where the plume is and knowing which way the wind is going to come from would tell you whether you know, perhaps the north side of the site should be evacuated or the south side. Um, it would help dramatically in, a, in evacuation planning um, to know better what's coming out of the plant and where those plumes are going. In terms of your overall experience in the nuclear industry and your experience with the recovery from Three Mile Island, uh, the class action lawsuit thereafter, do you feel like the nuclear energy industry um, as a whole was prepared to deal with an incident of this magnitude? Or is this beyond the realm of anything that was ever imagined in worst case scenarios for nuclear energy planning? No, it's not beyond, beyond the realm of what's ever been imagined. But no, I don't think they're handling it as well as they could. Um, there's a lot of similarities here to Three Mile Island, you know, underestimating the magnitude of the incident on the first day, for instance. That's a dead ringer for what happened at Three Mile Island. Uh, waiting for an evacuation for several days, that's a dead ringer for what happened at Three Mile Island. The, the difference is that uh, Governor Thornburg at Three Mile Island did tell pregnant Pregnant women and, and uh, young children to evacuate. And I believe the, the, the Japanese should do that out beyond this 20 kilometer or 12 mile zone. I think the Japanese should extend that warning for pregnant women and for children out to at least the 30 kilometer zone. Uh, being in your house um, uh, with a developing fetus, for instance, um, is, um, is not a good idea because your, your cells are growing very fast and it's fast growing cells that are more susceptible to, uh, to radiation. So if I, um, if I were the authorities there, I would suggest that uh, pregnant women and young children um, leave uh, further out than they have been. Former Nuclear Energy Executive Arnold Gunderson, thank you very much for your time, sir.